Hine matobu manayim Shevet achim gam yachad Hine matobu manayim Shevet achim gam yachad Hine Sing along together. Hine matobu manayim shevetachim kamiyachad. Hine matobu manayim shevetachim kamiyachad. We can get the words up on the screen. There we go. If you know this, join along with me. Ki Eshmer Shabbat. Ki Eshmer Shabbat. El Yishmerini. Ki Eshmer Shabbat. El Yishmerini. Thank you, Cantor. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Hope your summer is having some special, wonderful moments and you're staying comfortable and safe in this heat. So good to be together tonight. Thank you all for being here. And Flo and Larry, thank you for joining us from Oregon. I think you may be the farthest away uh, tonight, this Shabbat, although it looks like Leslie's coming from uh, the Sinai, uh, near the Sinai and, and the land of Egypt. So thank you all for being with us tonight for our monthly Shabbat at home service. From the sanctuary of your home to the sanctuary of Shabbat, may our Sabbath celebration be filled with heart, may it be filled with soul and joy and the love of family and friends and community. Well, let's now kindle the Sabbath lights to bring in Shabbat. We are on page nine in our prayer book, us everybody, page nine. We are so very honored to call upon our dear friend, Lori Kleinberg, to bring in the light and the warmth of Shabbat. Hi, Lori. Nice to see you. Oh, and Lori, we'll ask you if you can, if you'll unmute. And while Lori is unmuting, I want to mention we were talking earlier, Lori is celebrating her birthday during this month of July. She celebrated her birthday earlier, so it's great to have a belated celebration. We're lighting not a birthday candles, but Shabbat candles. So, Lori, thank you. Thank you. Can you see me? We can. We can see oh, you. Oh, good, because I see you. candles. Yeah. And Jake, let's also spotlight Lori so we can all see her a little. There we go. Uh, this one is ha having a problem. Marty, this one isn't right. Oh, it's not. The wick is just really. It's funny. Oh. Yeah. That's it. Ah, yes. 
Wonderful. Thank you. And Cantor's going to lead us all in the blessing. Okay. Adonai. Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher kichanu b'mitzvotav v'tzibanu lechad likner lechad likner shel shabbat Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Cancer. With now, our... should, I, should I read the one of the options of the readings? Sure. Would you like to? Yeah. Would you like to choose one of the readings, Lori? Well, yeah. That was on my instruction sheet. <laughs> that it happens. Okay. In the beginning, there was darkness, and the spirit of God hovered over the darkness. Then God created light, and the work of creation was begun. As we kindle these Sabbath lights, we remember the majesty of creation and rejoice in our ability to witness it again. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, hopefully we're all enjoying the majesty of creation. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. We appreciate it. And Speaking of majesty, how about the, the majesty and the grandeur and the joy of our families as we now think of our families near and far and we join together in this family blessing, which you can find on the bottom of page nine. May God bless you and keep you. May he shine his face upon you and grace. May he lift his presence unto you and grant you peace. May God bless you and keep you. May she shine her face upon you and grace you. May she lift her presence unto you and grant Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Well, let's turn to page 13 in our prayer booklet. Page 13, in honor of Flo and Larry joining us all the way from, I'm trying to find it again, all the way from Klamath, Klamath Falls, Oregon. I wonder if you two would lead us in this prayer of gratitude on the top of page 13. Hello, Larry, what do you think? Right, I don't, maybe I, did we lose Flo? We may have lost Flo. Okay, I'm, I've just uh, unmuted. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Larry. Um, so what, so what, can I ask before you guys lead the, the, the prayer of gratitude, what, uh, are you all there for uh, vacation? Are you all there for pleasure? Uh, we're on our way back from northern Idaho, where my brother lives. He lives in uh, Dover, which is right near Sandpoint. Oh, nice. And, uh, they had a gathering of the entire family. So it was very, very nice. Oh, beautiful. It sounds wonderful. It sounds yeah, it was, wonderful. We had a great time. Oh, well, great. Well, thank you for joining us um, this Shabbat. And yeah, we'd be honored to have you um, lead in this prayer of gratitude. And how we normally do sometimes is, you know, with two people, somebody takes the, the, the first paragraph and then somebody else takes the second paragraph italicized. So, Larry, if you're going to do both, I don't know if Flo's there with you. Um, but um, Wait a minute. I've got to make sure that I've got the right page on uh, what it's displayed. Okay, yeah, it, it page, yeah, on page 13, and we've got it on the screen there. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. Um, uh, 
Do you want me to read the top? Yeah, and it flows there to read the um, italics, and it, it flows not available. If you'll read the whole blessing, that would be wonderful. No, I'll read everything because uh, uh, she's not able to read it on her phone. Oh, okay. All right. Well, on so behalf I, of her, we'd be honored, Larry, yet yeah, to have you lead us in the okay. prayer. We thank you, God, for the gift of life. We thank you for the miracle of each new day, the sunrise and sunset, the moon and stars. We thank you for the blessings of family and friends, for all these miracles in our world. Adonai, our God, Adonai, our God, we give thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our light within, for the world around us, so filled with beauty, for the richness of the earth, which day by day sustains us, for all these and more, we offer thanks. Oh, thank you, Larry. A, a very moving reading. We appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, with those uh, words and, and, and that sentiment still reverberating in our heart, uh, we now open to the divine in life, the source uniting all things, uniting all the earth, linking life to life in sacred connection that is expressed in the Shema, page 14. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Shem kevod, mahuto, leolam ma'ed. Baruch shem kevod, shem kevod, mahuto, leolam ma'ed. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Shema Yisrael, Well, let's all chant some Torah together. On the next page, page 15, we join together in the Vyahafta prayer. Vyahafta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol Levavcha Ubechol Nafshecha Ubechol Meodecha Vehayu Adivarim Ha'ele Asher Anochi Metzavecha Hayom Alevavecha Veshinantam Levanecha Vedibarta Bam Veshivtecha Bavetecha Uvlech Techa Vaderech Uvshoch Becha Uvkumecha Ukshar tamle oat al yadecha, Vehayule totafot bain e necha, Uchtav tam al mezuzot betecha, Uvi sharecha, Leman tiskeru, Vasitem et komitzvotai, Vihitem keroshim lelohechem, Ani. Adonai Elohechem, Asher Hotzeti Etchem, Me Eretz Mitzrayim, Liot Lachem Lelohim, Ani Adonai Elohechem, Adonai Elohechem Emet. Thank you, Cantor. Thank you, everybody.
We're going to revisit that prayer a little bit later, but stay tuned. I'll tell you more about it. Um, but for now, um, Jake, uh, and by the way, everybody, Jake Barr, our new Zoom goodbye coming to us all the way from Albuquerque, New Mexico. I misspoke when I said that Oregon, Oregon may, be the, may be the farthest, maybe Albuquerque, New Mexico is. I'm not sure. I am not sure. We'd have to Google that. But Jake, thank you for joining us from Albuquerque on vacation, visiting his parents, and he's with us tonight. And Jake, why don't we also, as we get ready for the Micha Mocha, if we can spotlight Leslie Gordon, because she has got that wonderful graphic of the sea splitting in our tradition, considered the greatest miracle that ever happened, the sea split, and every man, woman, and child witnessed that great miracle. So Leslie is representing all of us um, just as we say in our tradition during Passover, we should each consider ourselves as though we personally left Egypt. Um, we should also each consider as though we each personally were standing there and enjoyed this greatest miracle of all time. And as we sing in joy. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for uh, allowing us to uh, imagine that miraculous moment. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Jake is um, going to share with us a beautiful image. So, Jake, why don't we put that image on the screen now? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. The sun is setting amongst the forest and the pine trees. The sun is about to set here in Southern California. And so as we look at this uh, beautiful setting, um, we think of the Shabbat that affords us this time to reflect upon the beauty of creation, the world God has given us, and all the blessings in our lives. So let's spend a, moment now, a few moments now, each one of us, in our own very personal silent prayer and contemplation this Shabbat. Let's try 
it together. Adonai Tzuri, Adonai Tzuri, Vigali, Vigali. Thank you, Cantor. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. And let's uh, open up our chat box, friends, if they're not already open. Uh, let's open those now. And if you're on an iPhone, it should be able to open up. Or if somebody lists in the chat box, it should be able to pop right up on the screen. So as we open up our chat boxes, My uh, chat safe boxes mode. I What's am it? wondering, I am wondering. I'm wondering if you have there in your home a Jewish object, a Jewish object that holds special significance for you. Now, the reason I ask is because this Shabbat, the weekly Torah portion mentions the mezuzah. This powerhouse of a Torah portion recalls the covenant at Sinai this week's Torah portion includes a repetition of the Ten Commandments. It introduces the words of the Shema, and directly after the Shema, of course, comes the Via Hafta that we chanted together earlier. So in the words of the Via Hafta from this week's Torah portion that we chanted, Uchtav tam al mezuzot betecha uvish arecha. Inscribe these words on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Jewish people throughout the ages have taken these words to heart and created beautiful ornamental mezuzot that today you can find in all colors, in all styles, and all designs to adorn the doorpost of a home or a synagogue. What's more, in places like West LA and Valley Village, you may have seen this, you can even find mezuzot on the doors of many offices as well. On the door of my doctor's office, my dentist's office, and you can find them all around uh, Los Angeles and buildings. So I'm wondering if you have a mezuzah, that holds special significance for you, or do you have another Jewish object at home that you cherish equally, if not more so? I invite you to give some thought to that, and if you'd like to share, we'd love to hear about your cherished Jewish object using the chat box. Could be a piece of Jewish artwork, could be a book, a kiddush cup, Shabbat candlesticks, a menorah, a piece of Jewish jewelry, any Jewish okay. object that holds special significance for you. I say that? Something no, that you be share. A, so, be a, so please tell us about that. I'm going to ask everybody if you can please mute. If you can please mute and we'll use our chat box for this. And if you have time, if you can even find it and show it to us. Looks like Maggie may have been doing that. Yes, thought Maggie was doing that. Maggie, so we can see that. And Jake, if you can spotlight that. And yes, you may be torn between two things, as Seth is saying. So Maggie, can you put in the chat box what we're looking at there? Looks like a wooden object with a, a Jewish star, Magen David. Um, maybe I can just, rather than typing it all out. This little box I've inherited from my grandfather and it's the only thing I have from him. And we have used it in the past many times as a little mm, uh, spice box. Beautiful. Wonderful. From your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that sounds very, very precious. Leslie was saying she has a mezuzah that was on her childhood door frame 
Um, oh, oh, can you show it to us, Leslie? Um, you probably have to put it right in front of your face. There it is. Oh, it looks like a, you know, like a, a pitcher, an ancient pitcher of, of water, or of wine. Beautiful. Beautiful. And it's from your childhood door frame. And so it's on your desk. Yeah, it's wonderful. I, I keep a mm -hmm. precious piece of artwork from my family home right here above my uh, screen, right above my computer screen here at the temple so I can always look at it. So yeah, there's a lot to be said for bringing it to a, a location. Arlene and Dan, um, you have- Dan. Oh, Dan has it. Oh, we got a couple of things. So, so Arlene mentioned a confirmation Bible and Dan's Kiddush Cup, RHW Prize. What does RHW stand for? For leadership and scholarship. Dan, do you want to unmute there? And you got it as a prize for leadership and scholarship in 1958. Right. It's a long time ago. Um, but um, Arlene's got a great confirmation Bible in the classic reform tradition. And I was... Um, and more in a conservative mode. And uh, they, I think, wanted me to go on to Hebrew high school, but uh, but other things beckoned. I hear you. Yes, okay. literature and, uh, yeah. I wonder what else in 1958 beckoned. Now you're... <laughs> <laughs> um, Anthony and the Imperials, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I was going to say. Very nice. Well... Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, yeah, these are precious uh, memories and and, and, and Jewish uh, Jewish ritual objects. Very nice. Seth, did you have something? Oh, you brought out the two. Let's take a look. I love it. You have a menorah and a kiddush cup filled with wine. It looks like. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got to have wine in it to make kiddush after after services. What's the story on the Kiddush cup? Where, how did you receive that? When? Did, where did you receive the, it? The Kiddush cup was a gift from the sisterhood at my uh, in the synagogue where I grew up, and uh, it For was your bar mitzvah. Bar mitzvah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And the Hanukkah is the Hanukkah from my from my parents' house, and nice. so, I, so so I brought that. You know, so I've kept that. And uh, and somewhere, I forgot, I have a third one. Um, somewhere I have my consecration Torah. It's in another room and I, it's too far away for me to go running off and get. Uh, and, I, and I brought it out a couple times for the, uh, for the Zoom uh, minion. When, when, we've, when we've had uh, nine people and we needed a tenth, going, well, I've got my little Torah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That little tour acted as the 10th the person of the minion. Well, it sounds like you have a, a lot of uh, Jewish objects with a lot of a lot of meaning. Thank you, Seth. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I, and George Lowe put in the chat box, he can't, he can't find his mother's Hanukkah. Oh, wait, George, what are we looking at there? It's, yeah, uh, back a little bit further. It's hard to tell because, but George, can you unmute and tell us what your whole, it looks like a document. Me that I, I think I flip on. Uh, it's my and signed by you, Rabbi, as well as uh, uh, Cantor uh, Cantor Steve. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mute myself. No, no, we can hear you, George. We can hear you. I yeah. muted you. Could you hold it in can front you of your out? face? Your camera is yeah, automatically. Yeah, you put it in, like in front of your chest. We have a better chance of seeing it. There it is. There, there, there we go. Is. And nice. uh, yeah, so you signed this, and as did Cantor Steve, and it was presented to me by, uh, I believe, Flo Poland. And this is my bar, bar certificate. Wonderful. That was such a, a meaningful day and uh, night, I should say. Yeah, yeah, it was great to celebrate with you, George. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. And Flo, I was, I know you've got quite a collection. Flo mentioned a collection of over 70 dreidels. And she got a lot of them while shopping at the temple gift shop. Yeah, your collection of dreidels is, is probably one of the most uh, uh, colorful, creative, and unique that I've ever seen. Um, nice, Flo, nice. Thank you, thank you. Other, other folks who um, 
you know, would like to share um, a meaningful Jewish object. That I can share one. Oh yeah, please can. Share one, because actually a lot of people ask me this, so it'll yeah. it'll it'll uh, alleviate the mystery. Uh, I wear when I'm wearing my talit. It is the only talit that I own. Uh, not because I never wanted to buy another one, but it's the one from my bat mitzvah that my mom made for me. And uh, she needle pointed all of the, the corners as well as the atara. And uh, I, I uh, upon my son's bar mitzvah several years ago, we replaced the fabric and then my sisters and I together tied the tzitzit. Uh, so it's, that's if anybody, you know, several have asked why do I always wear the same talit? Because it means a lot to me. Oh, it sounds like it. And a lot of loving family hands uh, involved with that. So beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Cantor. And Marilyn mentioned um, that she uh, has a small bouquet from a temple in Istanbul that you attended a bar mitzvah ceremony. Marilyn, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you put it maybe, yeah, a little bit higher. Okay, it was a, a type of a gift that was given when everybody left. We sat upstairs where the women sit, and it was a young boys' bar mitzvah. And this was in Istanbul. Our guide called him a Jewish Turkish prince, but he was Jewish. And he got us into the synagogue because they had a lot of security there. And we sat upstairs with the women, and this young boy was the bar mitzvah boy and we got this souvenir it's got his name on it but i can't i can't read it i can't tell what it is and it was may of i think 1977 that i can read the date mm -hmm. wow. no it was 1980 something 1984 is when we were there Wow. So it's a memory from a trip to Turkey and a memory of being in a synagogue in Istanbul. International. I love it, Marilyn. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Hi, Ben. Thank you for sharing that. Um, great. And uh, looks like Flo clarified in the chat box that she got the uh, dreidels while shopping uh, for the temple gift shop. Um, yes. And Carolyn uh tell it yeah carolyn what are we looking at there so this is the kind of shabbat candle holders that we used to make in mommy daddy and me years ago when my children were in it and i don't know whether this is the one ben made or the one Emma made um but it's the one i still use and this is um a koseliahu can we it's reversed. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you put it in front of your, like, under your chin, Carolyn, there we go, yeah. Yeah, so Elijah's name is spelled backward because it's a mirror image. But oh. this is an Elijah's cup for Seder that Emma made when she was at camp one year, I think. Nice. Nice. So these Jewish objects with your, with your children's. Um, uh, but I also, oh. I really do treasure my parking spot from when I was a canter. And they let me ha take the sign when I left there. So I have that in my garage. Very it nice. Says, Can't Carolyn Moore. <laughs> All right. All right. 1976, I believe. <laughs> 1976. Was this in um, San Bernardino? La Mirada. La Mirada. Uh huh. Very nice. Wow. Wow. Well, these are these are great, um, memorable uh, ritual objects that people are sharing. Would anybody else like to share who who hasn't already? Okay. Well, and I guess I'll just mention. You know, uh, I'd mentioned about the um, uh, the piece of artwork uh, that I'm looking at. It's a very colorful image of the prophet Amos by an Israeli artist named Yankel Ginsberg. Uh, I got it in, I should say my family got it in 1975 in St. Louis at the Jewish Community Center, had an Israel Expo in St. Louis, and it was historic. About 80,000 people went through that expo. It was a tremendous success.
address. Yanko Ginsburg was the artist in residence. My parents um, got a, a very colorful picture of the prophet Amos, and there were ladders uh, going up and down. And um, I, as, as, a, as a child, it was very prominently placed in our home on the landing, uh, or I should say on the staircase going up from the first floor to our bedroom. And when I would always run up and down the stairs, it always caught my attention because uh, it was just so colorful. And what were these big ladders doing going up to heaven? And, and uh, so it's, it's, it's one of my most prized uh, memories of my childhood. And, uh, and I'll then say something currently. My wife and I, when we got married, we got a beautiful mezuzah uh, that's also very colorful. It has a hamsa. It has a heart. It uh, has like a little Beit Knesset on it. It has the Hebrew letter Shin. And, um, and so that's a newer uh, piece that's also very meaningful um, on the doorposts of our house. So um, it's the great thing about Judaism. You know, there are things that we can connect with. We connect with uh, holidays. We can connect with Jewish texts, with people, with communities, with history, with places, and with objects that have layers and layers of meaning for us um, that are right there in our homes, in our mikdash ma'at, in our sanctuary and miniature that um, is in our homes. So thank you all. Thank you all for sharing. And if you get a chance uh, to read this week's Torah portion, it really is a, a classic. So, so many wonderful um, lessons and, and uh, eloquent experiences expressions and phrasing in, in the book of Deuteronomy and Be'et Hanan. So thank you all again. Well, at this time, we are going to share in our Mishaberach prayer of healing as we pray for a uh, healing of body and spirit to people that we know and care about. And we invite you to please join us at home. So let's all mute again um, so we can sing uh, at home together. this time we invite you to list in the chat box yes people that you know and care about who um, you are praying for that we are praying for together as a community so as we continue to list their names in the chat box we'll also put on the screen the list of um, folks on our Misha Bayrach page so as we're thinking of all the folks in the chat box, we also pray for all of these temple members who are in need of healing. All of these family members who are in need of healing. And all of these friends and coworkers who are in need of healing as we now continue our prayer of healing together. <laughs> Pray that 
They are all healed. Maggie, by the way, had mentioned in the chat box, uh, come to Zoom Minion uh, tomorrow morning, which you'll be hearing more about later. And um, they'll be studying uh, the Echanan, this wonderful Torah portion. So thank you, Maggie, and thank you, Minion, for doing that. I um, want to mention uh, there was a Jewish holiday that occurred earlier this week, you may be aware of. It is the holiday of Tisha B'Av. The ninth day of this month of Av, it occurred Wednesday night and Thursday. Tisha B'Av commemorates the destruction of the first and second temples in Jerusalem. And it also commemorates the tragedies of the, you know, the destruction of those Jewish communities during that time in the sixth century BCE uh, and then in the first uh, century CE. Tisha B'Av also commemorates other tragedies uh, amongst Jewish communities throughout the world, expulsions and uh, various things that took place uh, in, in Europe and in other parts of, of the world. And it's um, before Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day, Tisha B'Av really was the saddest day on the Jewish calendar. And in some ways it still is for many people. It is a day of communal mourning, um, communal grief, and as Jewish people, we come together in times of personal grief and loss, and we also, we also come together in times of communal grief, and we pray for comfort, we pray for healing, we pray for a restoration on all the levels that uh, as a, individually and, and communally, we can be restored and so in commemoration of Tisha B'Av this week, Cantor Allison has prepared some very moving music uh, for us. So Cantor, if you'll you'd be honored. So we're going to this, we're going to have these three songs are going to blend right into each other. Um, and they, they do in a, in a bit of a, of a, of a haunting and sad way. Um, the first melody, um, all of us may be familiar with Don McLean that wrote American Pie, an all time camp favorite and a uh, beautiful, wonderful song. He also happened to write By the Waters of Babylon, uh, the, the melody that we know, not that he wrote the words, the words came before him. Uh, that being said, um, the melody we're gonna start off with is, is with that, um, followed by Anima Amin, uh, which is a very familiar melody um, in in all of our memorial um, um, our memorial observances, um, and then we'll end it with Hashivenu. Um, so, being that we're all muted and all, enjoy the music or sing along, whatever helps you feel uh, in the moment. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Cantor. Thank you so much. The Shabbat is called Shabbat Nachamu, taken from the words of the Haftarah, the prophet Isaiah, whose prophecy begins, comfort, comfort my people, says the eternal. Isaiah was referring to being comforted after, after experiencing pain and loss. And so we now look for comfort and we ask for comfort for those who have suffered personal loss, the loss of a family member who has died, a friend who has passed away, members of our community who have passed, members of every race and nation who are a blessing to humanity. So at this time, um, we're going to put our um, Kaddish list up for all to see. And I invite you, if you are mourning a loss this Shabbat, to, uh, after a name is mentioned, to please stand. And then in just a moment, we'll all stand together to recite the Kaddish prayer. And as we're looking at the Kaddish list, I also invite you, if you are um, mourning the loss of a dear one, to please also put their name in uh, the chat box. This Shabbat, we say Kaddish for Susanna Picanato Mule. And we say Kaddish for Gerd Lester, Dr. Bernard Laisman, Don Walschlager, Ted Baker, Leonard Weiss, Al Rubin, Peter Siragusa, Lenore Horowitz, Leonard Sabbath. E. Francine Marcus, say Kaddish for Ilsa Jamin, Arlene Hammer, we say Kaddish for Jack Barkley. And for those who are observing Yard Site, the anniversary of the death of a loved one commemorated this week, we remember Stephen Christie. We remember Ralph Weinberg and Rhoda Finkel. And Tuba Ezri Meyeri and Thelma Ribnick. We remember Christine Mulholland. We remember Rabbi Carol Myers and Elaine Lowenthal. And we remember Jerry Stein. And again, our Kaddish prayer is for all those listed in the chat box. And we invite you at this time to please rise as we all 
all join together in the Kaddish prayer on page 24, on page 24, thanking God that they were with us. So Jake, we'll go down. If you can scroll down one more, thank you. Together we pray. Yikadal v'yikadash shemei raba v'yalma divara chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye duchol beit Yisrael v'agala u'bizman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shemei raba mevarach le'olam u'lalme almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase Vitadar, Vitale, Vitalal, Shmeid Kudisha, Virichu. The Ela mean call Birchata, Vishirata. Tushpachata, Vinechamata. The Amiran Bialma, Vimru, Amen. The He Shlama Rabba mean Shemaya. The Chaim Aleno Vialko Yisrael, Vimru, Amen. O say Shalom Bimroma. Who ya ase shalom. Alenu, vi alko Yisrael, vi alko Yoshve Tevel, vi imru ame. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn. May we be a source of comfort to all who are bereaved. Together we say, Ame. And please be seated, everybody. <laughs> Oh, say shalom bim roma. Huya a say shalom aleinu. Ve al ko Yisrael. Ve imru, imru amen. Oh, say shalom bim roma. Huya a say shalom aleinu. Well, we are now very honored to call upon a new member of our Temple Sinai Board of Directors, a very creative new member. We are so honored to call upon Leslie Gordon. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Okay, good. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Uh, thank you, Rabbi and Cantor, for a beautiful service. Uh, I really, really like hearing um, little tidbits and stories from fellow congregants. It really is, it's quite nice. I'm kind of a shy person, so I don't get to talk to people a lot, but I love hearing about little personal tidbits. It's really nice. Okay. Uh, of course, thank you, Lori. Kleinberg for your candle lighting. I uh, hope you will all be able to join Rabbi Rick and Kendra Allison Friday, August 4th. I'm sure you all know about this, the family-friendly outdoor Shabbat. Sounds really fun. It's in uh, La Cañada Memorial Park. <clears throat> Please invite all your friends from the Foothill communities for this special service. Grab a picnic dinner and lawn chairs and come join the fun. You'll find details about this event and others in your Sunday e blast. And be sure to stay afterwards now and schmooze at our virtual Oneg. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Thank you so much, Leslie. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And, uh, and yeah, just to uh, echo what Leslie had mentioned, that we're taking our Shabbat services on the road next Friday. We, as she said, we'll be in La Cañada. So we're, we're calling for a 5.30, bring your own picnic dinner and bring your own blankets to sit on or, or chairs, picnic chairs, or uh, the chairs that you might take to the beach, comfortable chairs. And uh, we will be providing a delicious uh, oneg of challah. And we've got, we're gonna have ice cream sandwiches. We're gonna have fruit bars. We're gonna have cut watermelon for you. So please join us in La Cañada 
Um, it should be a wonderful Shabbat under the stars, um, up in the mountains of La Cañada. And, uh, and as Leslie uh, said so eloquently, yes, please bring your, invite your friends and, uh, and let's make it a nice, wonderful outdoor celebration. Um, well, and uh, as Leslie said, we're going to have our virtual Oneg in just a moment. Before we do so, we are going to do a uh, short kiddish. So, boy, Seth, you had your kiddish cup. I wonder if you could raise that filled with wine from your bar mitzvah. And anybody else who has a kiddish cup? Hello. Hello, Hilo. Hi. Um, looks like, yes, other people. Dan, you've got yours. Yes, from 19. Was it 57 or 58? Yes, and uh, so on behalf of uh, all, them and all of us, let's join together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri hagafen. L'chaim. L'chaim. Boy, Cantor, I'm just thinking about all the memories they're sort of drinking in there, right? All the... All the Kiddush and Shabbaton they've shared uh, with that Kiddush cup, uh, as, as Leslie was saying, very, very powerful, very meaningful. Thank you. All right, and Cantor, you've uh, prepared a closing song for us. Yes, I thought I would do one of the various melodies of Adon Olam. Um, um, this is the one, being that there were some melancholy moments within our service. This one has some melancholy melody going to part of it and then gets happy and boisterous. So I hope you'll join me with this. Adon Olam Hashem Alam Levado yim 
Shalom.